We're here on Thursday afternoon on the trading floor of the New York Stock Exchange. What a week it's been. There have been plenty of developments out from Washington, D.C. And for the most part, although the equity averages hit new record highs on Thursday, they are fairly muted. So joining me now is Stephen Guilfoyle of Sarge 986. Sarge, great to have you here today. Great to be here. Thank you, Remy. Well, we finally got the uh, tax plan from the Republicans, but there's still a long ways to go. But uh, this afternoon, apparently, according to breaking news reports, Trump said we might have this by the end of this year. Now, in terms of the Fed chair nomination, Jerome Powell is expected. So what do you make of these developments uh, in terms of the corporate as well as individual tax rates? It's funny that the market's not really reacting to anything, isn't it? Uh, all right, first, I guess we'll look at Jerome Powell. All right. I see this as a positive. My trader side really likes Jerome Powell. I, I think he's probably something of a dove. Most people do. I really like the fact that he's good on the regulation side. So this means he's probably good for banks. With Jerome Powell at the head of the Fed, regardless of what rates do, though, they should meander higher. Uh, as for taxes, I'm a little disappointed in what I see in the meat and potatoes of, of the plan. Uh, I don't like the 30% pass-through. I think it's a little high. I don't like the 12% the repatriation on cash. I think that's a little high. I'm watching the Russell 2000 as, as directional as far as whether there's skepticism behind whether, the, whether this will be passed or not. I don't think they'll get any Democratic votes. The Russell is telling me right now that, that the markets are really not sure that this will be passed anytime soon. And of course, we're here on the eve of the jobs report for the latest month. Uh, given the hurricane effects for the month of September, we're expecting a bounce back in terms of headline non-farm payrolls. We'll also be watching uh, average hourly earnings. What are your expectations, Sarge? Yeah, I, I think I think that's about right. I think you're looking for probably 320 to 330 on, on the non-farm payroll number as we bounce back from the hurricanes. But you're going to see suppression on the, on the wage side. You're going to see a year-over-year -year number probably around 26, 27. You're going to see month-over-month -month wage growth probably about... 0.2%. And that's okay. People shouldn't be startled by that because in the wakes of those storms, the people with, with low-end jobs couldn't get to their jobs. So the numbers were skewed. It, it, it was really almost a, a month where maybe they should have taken a pass on releasing anything. I guess they couldn't do that, but, but it was a misleading month. And as long as you understand that, you shouldn't be shocked by tomorrow's numbers. And it is earnings season and results continue to pour in. Uh, given what you've seen so far, have you changed any of your uh, trading strategies? And as we head into the rest of this month, what are your strategies? Well, you know, yeah, I've changed a lot of things around, I guess. I still, I mean, I still like tech, still love the semis. I think you got to be in that, in it to win it as far as that's concerned. They, they run the world, basically. I like the way oil has moved. Uh, I'm still long a lot of my oil names. I'm still long Valero, which has performed spectacularly. I think if we see $54 support for WTI, you could ultimately see $58 uh, defense spending, right? It's going to be a big part of the, t of the Trump plan going forward, the budget. But yet, some of the defense contractors have run into a little bit of trouble lately. I actually sold my Lockheed Martin. I think I can buy it back around $300, i am hoping. Uh, right down is my pick in the sector right now. I lightened up on Kratos Defense, which I know a lot of people followed me in that trade, so I'm putting that out there so you know what I'm doing there. I'm, I, I leave about 65% of the position. Uh, Northrop Grumman has run into some problems with, uh, with quality control. Both the Army and the Air Force are complaining about some of the jobs they did, so I would be a little, I'd drag my feet in that space. Uh, and as far as Fang goes, uh, I still, Fang, I should call it, we'll put the extra A in there for Apple, because I really like Apple. I mean, we're going to see those numbers pretty soon, I think tonight, right? And uh, I think Apple, with all this pent-up demand for the iPhone 10 or X or whatever the heck it is, and the fact that they almost, you're almost hostage once you're an Apple customer. They're going to service your, your, the whole ecosystem, and it's almost a perfect plan, and it's a perfect business. Uh, my short-term goal for the stock is 176 is my price target. My aggressive price target is 197. And very quickly, before I let you go, uh, the president of the U.S. will be heading over to Asia for the next couple of days. But as we head into the upcoming week, we'll continue to monitor geopolitics as well as global uh, central banks. Earlier today, the Bank of England did raise rates for the first time in over a decade, but the statement as well as Outlook report was seen as dovish. So what do you make of everything that's happening globally in terms of monetary policy? Yeah, Mark Carney's chasing inflation, I think. Uh, you know, he didn't cut back on quantitative easing at all. And he's still going to buy the corporate bonds. So that sound, smells to me. And he was a hawk back in his days of Canada, too. So that smells to me like something. It's probably something he really wanted to get on the tape, just to arrest the, little, the 3% inflation that they have been having over there in the UK. As far as the geopolitical, it's good the president goes over there and talks, talks to the, the players that 
exist, especially with North Korea always. Let's face it, we're one stupid move away from a problem at all times, as long as North Korea behaves the way that they have in the past, uh, which is another reason to buy the defense contract, even though I just sold Lockheed Martin. But, but that's probably the biggest issue, regardless of the business talks that will go on with South Korea, Japan, you know, all the, all the major business centers and large economies over there. It is North Korea that has to be the center of the focus with, with all those countries. Okay, Sarge, well, thank you so much for joining me today. And as always, thanks for all your insight. Anytime. Thank you for having me. Thank you.